Hello, friends. Welcome to my. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, friends. Welcome to Monday. It's a it's a it's a day of days. Anyways, you're watching this on UFT Tech. So weird, but you know what? Life is really like that sometimes. It just be like that. It do. So let's talk about today's video sponsor, which is Displate. <gasps> Check out these dope metal prints at displate.com forward slash UFD tech official. You can get weeb stuff. You can get nature stuff. You can get weeby nature stuff. It's amazing. Metal prints. It's awesome. And they hang with magnets. We have ours invisibly hanging because there's no wall there, but we wanted to mount them anyways because they're gorgeous. And they plant 10 trees for every single Displate you order. They've already planted 10 million. That's a lot. You know, this is a lot this ad, so let's move on. Let's talk about Intel's GPU plans because those have actually been a little bit uh, disclosed by Raja Kadori in an interview that he did with another people, YouTube channel. He disclosed a little bit during an interview with a Russian YouTube channel where he talked about their general plan for how they're gonna roll out GPUs to begin with. And we know from Intel's own uh, admissions that they are definitely planning on launching discrete gaming GPUs in 2020, which my friends, less than four months away before that's actual reality. That's, that's our life, we're 2020, that's crazy. Anyways, one of the things that came out of that interview that everybody was hyped about was that Raja Kadori apparently stated that their push for GPUs is gonna start at $200. So in the GTX 1060, RX 480 level price region, which in today's nomenclature would probably be like an RX 5600 in a GTX 1660. So that's what we should potentially be expecting. Except for he didn't say that at all because apparently all of this came about and it's not just one place talked about this, a whole bunch of different places and articles reporting, no, Intel's GPU is gonna be $200. It's gonna be amazing. They're gonna wreck the floor. Uh, no, that was, it was just a mistranslation of the actual interview and the YouTube channel actually posted an addendum saying, hey, y'all are misinterpreting and mistranslating what exactly was happening. Rajat Kadori was talking about their general strategy going forward and saying that they're gonna start in the neighborhood of $100 all the way up to data centers, basically running the gamut from everything down low to everything up high. It was more of a comment on the general participation rather than the price tag of the upcoming GPU. So, yeah. Although I can't really fault a whole lot of people for it, especially since I don't speak Russian. I'm sure if I had saw this interview and I saw that the translation was $200, we would have reported on it and then we would have had to correct it. But now I get to look at everybody because I waited and say, it's an up, there's an update. It's not $200, but it could have been and it could be. It's just not what Raja Kadori said, but they could potentially be coming out with something that is gonna wipe the floor with AMD and Nvidia. That's what I'm kind of hoping. I'm hoping we get a CES launch, that they help us early in 2020. They, they just, they let us lather in their happiness of GPU development and then we'll be good. That's what I want. Am I gonna get it? We gotta stay tuned. But you know what you don't have to stay tuned for? Bad drivers from Nvidia, because they're all out there, apparently. NVIDIA is issuing warnings talking about how some of their drivers have some exploits in them that uh, won't, might be a nasty surprise for you. And so they're asking you to upgrade or update to the latest drivers uh, which have security patches. However, it's not that big of a security risk, I guess, because it's not available for remote exploits. Somebody has to have access to your local system. And in case they do, I mean, I think you have more troubles than an NVIDIA exploit, but at least NVIDIA is patching their stuff. Inside the house. And then, speaking of AMD GPUs, we actually have a lot of leaked pictures regarding the upcoming launches of the 5700 and 5700 XT AIB partner models. From ASUS, we have both the Strix and Tough pictures. Then we also got things such as XFX that's been leaked. Then you also have the Yestin cards, which are some bubblegum candy pink deliciousness that just, they look, I love them. I love them. How, what do you guys think of these awesome blue and pink? freaking RX 57. It looks like a panda. Then there's also pictures of the Red Devil, MSI's Ventus, as well as HIS IceQ X2 version. So all of the 
RX 5700s appear to be leaking. The expected uh, embargo lift date for reviews is supposed to be the 7th. I do have it confirmed that we do have custom models coming into UFD Tech. However, I don't have a firm date and I don't have, it's definitely not gonna be by this Wednesday. I'll tell you that much. So if embargo lifts on Wednesday, we ain't gonna be there with the rest of nobody because uh, you know, life really do be like that sometimes. And then in bigger news, or smaller news, depending on how you look at this, it appears that Gigabyte has decided to kowtow to AMD's demands to remove PCI Express 4.0 from non-X570 motherboards. This is part of an ongoing saga between AMD and the motherboard manufacturers, where certain motherboard manufacturers decided to update the previous motherboards to support PCI Express 4.0, and AMD was like, nope, we don't like it, we're gonna, we're gonna write a new BIOS, and no, stop it. And Asus went on ahead with it. It also looked like Biostar went on ahead with it. Gigabyte also did, but now they have removed that support from their previous AM4 motherboards, which looks like AMD is gonna get what it wants. But when you have a company like Asus, who's bigger than AMD in a lot of ways, uh, you got, you're gonna see who's the feistiest of the bunch. That's for sure. This is, this is thermonuclear war 2019. I mean, it also is pretty clear that Asus was willing to throw AMD out last year when it came to the GeForce partner program. They were like, Strix is GeForce. AMD, you're gonna get your own new redesigned piece of crap. We're not gonna, you don't get ROG. You get no gaming branding. You're just gonna be crap. So Asus not really friendly with AMD, at least when it came to their graphics cards. We'll see how that works when it comes to their actual motherboards. Hmm. Maybe I'm reading too much into anything and there's no drama here. I offer you a choice. Bend the knee and join me. Together, we will leave the world a better place than we found it. And then Samsung has discussed some of its plans with regards to AMD's SOC, uh, GPU plans of fusing the Samsung and AMD people in mobile environments. And they're talking about how they could potentially have AMD graphics on Samsung SOCs within two years. Phones are already powerful enough. I mean, unless this is gonna, you know, bake my cake and also run crisis ray trace stuff. Why? Why do I need an AMD GPU on my phone? It's gonna be hot and loud, and then my battery's not gonna last. Memes, I got them. Let's talk about EK. They released a press release regarding a new leak tester that they're rolling out, which will allow you to test the pressure in your loop system and make sure you ain't sprung a leak nowhere. And do you like knitting? Do you like gloves? Okay, well, guess what? All of those are gonna be taken away from you in the coming automation revolution, because you're screwed. If you like to knit things, you can't have a hobby anymore that involves robots, okay? Because MIT just showed off that they have an AI robot in their computer science and artificial intelligence laboratory that can design knitting prints and then have them knitted. You're screwed. That, that little scarf you wanna make, the robot's gonna do it. Oh, you're doing it for art? Robot's gonna do it before you. Yeah, huh, how's it feel? You're obsolete even in your spare time. Don't need grandmas anymore. AI's replacing your grandmama. She gone. Uh, speaking of things that were gone, Huawei, when it came to the US government and like selling and buying stuff. Anyways, Intel has apparently applied for a license to continue to supply Huawei with certain parts that they were still continuing to supply Huawei with, even though there was a regulatory ban. Intel still did it, and now the CEO, Bob Swan, was like, maybe we should just apply for this. Seems to be going on longer than we thought. Maybe they thought that uh, President Trump was just having a bad day, or they thought that they, the geopolitical climate was gonna blow over, not a big deal, or they thought that they're a massive corporation and that laws don't matter to them because they can just pay their way out of any fine. That's what I would do. And then, in case you're interested in picking up a flagship phone at a not flagship price, currently the Pixel 3 looks like it's $300 off on the Google Store, although the caveat is that this looks like it's in anticipation of the Pixel 4 launching soon since Google's been releasing stuff, so it could just be a price drop to get their stock out the door since nobody bought them at the full price, because, yeah. You could still get a Pixel 3a XL for cheaper than the cheapest Pixel 3, and then you have a bigger phone and better battery life. I don't know. And then let's talk about something that is pretty devastating with the mass shootings that happened in the United States over the past weekend. There's a lot of controversy going around. There's obviously the gun control debate. There's the mental illness debate. There is just the right to bear arms debate. There's a whole lot of debates taking place, but there was one company that finally said that it could no longer aid in a bed in what appears to be a website that kind of at least 
contributed to some of the mass shootings that have taken place recently, and that is Cloudflare deciding that they are no longer going to host 8chan on their services. One of the reasons why 8chan is the target of Cloudflare's separation at this point is because it appears that both the shooter from El Paso, Texas, as well as New Zealand decided to post manifestos on 8chan, and from what I gather about the site, it's not like that is particularly heinous content there. It just kinda is what 8chan is. And obviously there is the debate that they'll just get hosted elsewhere, just like the Daily Stormer, which apparently was a white supremacist website that the that Cloudflare also dropped back in 2017. They just got hosted elsewhere. However, it does appear that Cloudflare doesn't want to be attributed with websites such as these, so they're just dropping the websites altogether. And the CEO of Cloudflare stated that some have wrongly speculated this is due to some conception of the United States First Amendment. This is incorrect. First, we are a private company and not bound by the First Amendment. Second, the vast majority of our customers and more than 50% of our revenue comes from outside the United States where the First Amendment and similarly libertarian freedom of speech protections do not apply. There are obviously a ton of implications behind this, supporting websites that you don't necessarily agree with. And I mean, it's similar to Twitter deplatforming people or like Alex Jones being removed from platforms. There are tons of debates that can ensue based on this. Is this right? Even if it is potentially legal, does that mean that it's ethical in a general concept? Obviously the acts that these shooters did were heinous and that's not really the conversation that's happening. It's more the slippery slope argument that takes place of if you can remove one website because of offensive content, can you then just remove other websites due to things that you simply don't like about them? And obviously the answer is yes, these companies are well within their right as a private company to do such, but should that be the things that are happening? However, that's not obviously the main debate that needs to be taking place. We here just on Hot News discuss the tech side of things, cloud for obviously being tech. And it's pretty devastating that dozens of people lost their lives over the weekend, regardless of the reasons, regardless of the websites that are attributed to it. It's something that obviously shouldn't happen and it shouldn't even be something that I'm discussing. <sighs> so with that being said, let's go ahead and finish Hot News on a lighter note. We got a couple more things, such as a failed attempt to cross the English Channel on a hoverboard is now actually redone by the same dude, and he was actually finally able to cross the English Channel on a hoverboard. World's first. Well done. He not only invented the hoverboard, but he can fly it pretty meanly too. And then, in something that you didn't know you actually wanted and don't really, is that there's an, a, a Razor Electric SUV. I think uh, Engadget describes it appropriately by saying it's the unholy offspring of a Razer gaming laptop and an electric SUV. And that's where I'm gonna leave the unholiness today. We're gonna end hot news there. Thank you all so much for watching this episode. We will be back on the Hot News channel and we will also be back on hot UFD Tech. We're trying to figure things out as far as the content production side of things. So uh, it's, it's just a complication right now that we're gonna be here on UFD Tech for a little bit, but you guys, you guys like it anyways. And while you're at liking things, why don't you like your disc plates that you're gonna purchase using the link in the video description. Use coupon code UFD to save 15%. And I also think that they have a sale going on today where you can save 20%. It'll be on the website. Just enter the coupon code. Anyways, hit the like button if you enjoyed the video. Get subscribed. Subscribe to the UFD Tech channel, also the Hot News channel, where we're also still gonna post videos. Don't you worry your little buns about that, okay? Well, everything's fine, okay? Mommy and Daddy still love each other. Anyways, I'm Brett with the UFD Tech channel. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see your smiling faces again in the next video. Bye. I just want to be drama alert for tech, I'll tell you. That's a joke. Stating fact.